Hello one and all, this is Lockus Lovelocks back with Kathy Rain, and we just discovered that our grandfather was working on some research in his attic, so we're gonna head back there and see what's going on. No comment this time? Hey, uh, Kathy, wait. Oh. What? Do you eat foot? I, I mean, food? food? <laughs> Absolutely not. I feed on human misery. I, uh... Relax, Lenny. Yes, <laughs> I do eat food. Eat food. Oh, oh, great. Can I buy you food sometime? And also buy food for me? And and then maybe we can eat the food together? Aww. Um... Rather eat a foot. Like, apparently, um... No. Just no. You know, be, you know, he's kind of being cute about it. You can't just, like, insult the guy. We're not that- we're not assholes, are we? I'm really busy right now. Maybe later. Oh, okay. See ya. I think that's the best way to handle that, right? I mean... Okay, so back to the rain residence. I assume Grandma's still in the living room, so just head upstairs. I should probably ask Grandma first. Fair enough. Oh, hello, dear. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? Would you mind if I took a look in the attic? I suppose it would do no harm. Come with me. I wonder if she knows anything about the Thanks, research Grandma. he was doing. You are welcome, dear. Be careful now. Okay, this isn't creepy at all, is it? Let's can we turn on a light? I see a light bulb, but where's the switch? Yeah. Is that it? Bulb. Oh, there it is. Nothing. The bulb must be burned out. Of course it is. The bulb looks burned out. I'll have to replace it. Okay. What do we have in our inventory? Could use a lighter, I guess. Light room, but simple lighter. Nah, it's drafty in here and almost out of fuel. Gonna need it for my smokes. Oh yeah, priorities, of course. Okay, can't see anything, so... Is there, not, is there like a replacement bulb? Table lamp. There we go. Free light bulb. Score. Can I just? The bulb looks burned out. I'll have to replace it. Okay, it would be nice if she just used the bulb, but that's fine. We'll just uh, combine the light bulb. There we go. There we go. Hmm. It's a book, shelves. Various books and office supplies. Nothing in particular catches the eye. Guess so I'll just go straight for this book here. A thick book about math. So we can just take it? Can I look at it? Read it, okay. The Secrets of Infinite Numbers by Arthur P. Gibson. It's a couple of bookmarks. Got the number pi. Fibonacci numbers. This is gonna be important for something. Probably some puzzle. And prime numbers.
all the way up to 64. Okay. Typewriter. An old typewriter covered in cobwebs. An old... Just some old bills. Nothing interesting. Coffee cup. Decades old coffee. Lovely. <laughs> um... Uh, nah. <laughs> Let's not drink it. Empty. Okay, my eyes drawn to that briefcase over here. I'm sure that we're gonna need Nothing. to code for that, right? Okay, let's let's check it out. The locked briefcase. Is it gonna be the Fibonacci sequence? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Three point one four one five nine. One five nine. That would have been too easy. I doubt the book alone is enough to solve this. Okay. Let's go talk to Grandma about the uh, the briefcase then. Oh wait, there's a diagram. I'll, I'll go check the diagram after I talk to her. Oh, hello, dear. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? I found a locked briefcase in the attic. Do you know anything about it? Oh, that old thing? Joseph said there were just some old boring Air Force papers in there. If that was the case, why use an intricate combination lock? That's a very good question, dear. In any case, I wouldn't know how to open it. Okay. See you later, Grams. Take care, dear. So, is there anything else? A decent that sized book collection. Most of them science or history related from the looks of it. Is there anything else here that's going to give me a hint? I remember playing with that. Grandpa had a whole collection of them. An intricate toy airplane with moving parts. Okay sideboard a robust piece of wooden furniture Ooh, very there's robust. nothing quite like the soothing sound of rain falling on a window hmm. okay it's gotta it's gotta be the math book and something else could it be okay let's look at that diagram it looks like someone was doing geometry I can't make much sense of it Okay. Teddy bear. Mr. Bear! Oh, how did you get all the way up there? Good idea. You just keep watch. I'll do the searching. <laughs> ah! Achievement, guys. We're clicking on something. A worn office chair on wheels. I'm feeling a sudden urge to do a race. <laughs> What else do we have? Cigarettes, the church brochure, dictaphone, stun gun? Maybe if we give it a big old jolt. I don't want to zap that. <laughs> okay, let's uh let's look at this again. So this didn't work. Um Leather briefcase sealed by a combination lock. Yeah, that would have been too. Okay. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's twenty-one and thirteen. 
Okay, well, I could try this. One, one, two, three, five, eight. Hmm. Yeah, that would have been too easy. I doubt the book alone is enough to solve this. What else could we... what else would we need to use? Maybe it's um, the prime numbers in both? That would be three, three, five. Let me write these down. Three, five, two, three, five. One, two, three, four, five. No, that's not gonna be it. Okay, so I must be I must be missing something. Listen to that dictaphone again. Move tape. Something on the tape? Standard micro tape labeled investigation. It should play fine in Mr. Dicto. The tape grandpa had on him when he was found in 81. Let's listen to it again. Rewind. Note to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, oh. a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. That could be part of it. Okay. That could be important. Note to self. Three. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, One. and two yellow tulips. Two. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I just don't want her to worry. She has enough to think about with everything that's been going on lately. With Sharon and Kathy. Anyway, I'm getting closer to finding the source. I have a theory, but I need help. I'm gonna have to involve somebody else. 312. Okay, if I missed anything else, papers, typewriter, that drawer to be open. I've already drawer. searched that. Okay. Various books and op. Mr. Good idea. We look at the police report again. Maybe. Um, there's flowers down here that are going to help. Of course. These should come in handy when I need to make calls. The phone, I don't think the phone's going to help. Talk to Grandma oh, again. Oh, hello, dear. Maybe we can ask her about the math book? I found this book in the attic. Recognize it? Oh, yes! I bought it for Joseph's birthday once. He was always fascinated by numbers. He believed that math could explain everything in this world. He was a man of science. There's no denying that. That's it? 
I found a locked briefcase in the- Oh, that old thing? If that was the case, why use an intro- That's a very good question, dear. In any case, I- Why does it well, say the MacBook go grandpa, alone Kathy. won't do it? Let's go back to the grave, I guess. Maybe there's something on his tombstone? Must be entirely buried now, yeah. The grave is brimming with flowers. Ah, uh, flowers. I'm gonna find out what happened to you, Grandpa. I promise. Joseph Irving Rain. March 17, 1924. September 18, 1995. That's it, eh? Okay. So it's gotta be, it's gotta be something to do. It's gotta just be the math book. It's just a math puzzle there. I'm not seeing. I have to use something on the math book. I don't think anything about that needs to be written. Let's see. I don't want to burn that. Probably a good idea. Hmm. Infinite numbers. The space here. Five numbers. We tried the one one two three five eight. We tried three one four one five nine. Some kind of correlation here. So the prime number is here. Three, one, one, five, right? Here, there, um, one, one, no, no, sorry, actually, one's not a prime number according to this. Um, let's start over. We got One, two, three, five. Three, five, two, three, five. And three from the recording? Could that be it? That seems pretty complicated. Three, five. Two, three, five. Three? Must be missing something. What was that weird first message on the tape? 
Yeah, yeah, that's... That's what I thought. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it's, um... Starts... So it's, it could be three... Let's try three... Three, five? Two... Three, five. Nope, that's not it. Okay, I'll listen to the recording again. Uh, examine. Note to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. Note to self. I've been working on my research in the ad. Note to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. Two yellow tulips. Oh, those colors do match. Okay, if I listen to it again. No, nope. I've been working on my research. I just don't want her to worry. She has enough to think about with everything that. Note to self. Remember the perfect. Three red. So that's three numbers. Note to self. One blue. And then remember the perfect boot. Two consists yellow. That's six numbers. Now, if we look at the math book. There's uh, three bookmarks, and there so it's red, blue, and yellow. So maybe it's the first three numbers from red. Two, three, five. First number from blue be one then uh, the first number from yellow three one okay two three five one three one if it's not this I'm not sure what it is two three five one three one yes. got it sweet man that was hard that's a tough first puzzle Okay, let's let's see what's inside. Envelope. A thick yellow envelope. Open it. Just the envelope. There's a whole bunch of other things in there. I can't I can't look at those. It's like a map. What is it? Let's see what's in here. There were two pictures. A newspaper clipping, a key, and a tape inside. Another tape. Okay. Picture. Let's look at that first. Looks overexposed. I can't make much out. I think I see trees in the background, but most of the picture is just bright white. This looks like a military photo. Grandpa in uniform with two other men. Something is handwritten on the back. Flight training. McConnell Air Force Base, 1941. McConnell Air Force Base. Tragic drowning in Conwell Springs. In early morning on Sunday the 14th, a teenage girl found dead near Conwell Lake. The girl is survived by her mother, father, and younger brother. The funeral service will be held at Conwell Cemetery on the 21st of July. The notice is dated July 15th, 1975. Tragic story. I wonder why Grandpa saved this. So that's six years before the incident? It's a small key, fairly modern design, no identifying tag, unfortunately. Okay, let's combine the micro cassette. Let's listen to this. You've reached the rain residence. Leave a message after the beep. 
Hello, Joseph, Mrs. Rain. It's me, Charles. I thought I'd give you a call. Erica just had her firstborn. It's a boy. Thankfully, he looks nothing like his father. Uh, listen, I was thinking maybe you'd like to come and visit. And what about your little Kathy? Maybe she wants to see the baby. Well, anyways, I hope to see you soon. All the best. Bye. You people make me sick. We're never coming back. Don't call, don't write. If you ever try to contact us, I will call the police. What? What is that? Joseph, you there? It's me, Cocky. I, it happened to me too. And I'm not going to tell any of those bastards. They got it all wrong. You're the only one I trust now. Just call me back as soon as you can. Hmm. I wonder who this cocky is. Wow. Okay, we've got a lot of pieces now, guys. Um, crazy. A lot of pieces. Not really sure what they all mean yet. But we'll investigate some more in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, guys. This is Lucas Lovelocks signing out for now, and I love you all.